Hey everybody, I'm vibed up and I, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about music and, uh, got my good old normal, uh, t-shirt on. I'm really glad I kept this, <clears throat> but I watched a few videos today and, um, you know, I love how the videos vibe me up. And so, um, uh, Chris Goodwin, good man, you know, man, I love the uh, diversity of your taste and what you buy. So I wanted to um, kind of um, vibe on some of what you were showing, uh, but I wanted to first follow up with the back world. Um, I've showed a 12 inch by back world I have, but I didn't show, I have a couple of us, seven inches by them. And here is a vagrant thought. This is put out by World Serpent, which is uh, no longer, but this is a really nice uh, seven inch picture disc. The Tide, which is a great song by Backworld. And um, I think you can still, yeah, you can still find this. There's that. And then um, there's this seven inch, Hands of Ash, with a remix on seven inch. It's kind of a clear, grayish, silvery vinyl. So I wanted to show those. Um, yeah, Backworld is great. It really are. It's really, really neat music that um, sucks you in. I'm going to show some more seven inches, but right quick, um, vibing on Chris just a little bit. He had showed uh, that West Coast, and um, here's an original copy of Volume Two. I just pulled it. Just vibing. You know, this is a. Um, some interesting stuff. It's not the greatest stuff, but it's uh, interesting nonetheless. Um, what I'm listening to is um, a record that I, I have a, bu a bunch of records that I'm always meaning to rediscover. And this was one of them. It's a band from Rio de Janeiro, I believe. Uh, Accidente. Uh, in Casa de Accidente. I think. Um, and it's got that um, yeah, you know, Emerson, Lake and Palmer is a touchstone with guitars. This is kind of nice. You know, I have not heard this in a long time. I've had it a long time. And um, 1975, I think, is when this came out or something like that. Yeah. So that's what I'm listening to. Earlier, I was vibing on some stuff and um, I was listening to The American Breed. This goes back to my childhood. Bend Me, Shape Me was a big hit. I don't know if any of you know, but this this band went on to become Rufus with Chaka Khan. This very band, that, that's who Rufus is, was. Good band, good album. And uh, a couple things I pulled from the A's that I plan to play is this 12 inch single by Air, Everybody Hurts. This is uh, good stuff. There's some remixes on here. I plan to play this, and then um, this is my favorite, uh, A Certain Ratio album, Force. Haven't played this in a while. Good band, A Certain Ratio. And then while I um, pulled the Backworld singles, it got me um, kind of rummaging into the singles, so I just pulled some to show. Um, it's collectible now, but this is a band from Nebraska, from Omaha that were friends of mine. That this is really collectible now. It's the Better Beatles. And this is an original copy. I'm down. And then they did uh, Penny Lane. These are kind of like not punk, but kind of a. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's the punk thing, but it's like these real blase and they can't play versions of the songs. That, it, but it really works. And. I, Digital Sex, we used to play shows with these guys, and they're friends of mine, so I had them sign this when I got it, and um, I don't exactly know how, but I ended up with a test pressing of it as well. <laughs> this is actually a test pressing of the Better Beatles. Some other singles I just pulled to just show, um, I need to listen to them, it's been a while, but Blonde Redhead. Good band, Limited Conversation, back with Slogan. 
this is an old, are they Man Manchester, Liverpool, the box, old style drop down, I really like this. Yeah, Mike, I got British in me, for sure, when it comes to taste, musical taste. Love the Brits. Always have. Always have. The Box. Another British, another UK band that I really dig. The Brilliant Corners. This is their single, single teenage. Got a couple of Brilliant Corners albums. Really like this band. Broken Social Scene. Maybe Dreams of Pavement. I need to, like I said, I need to listen to this. Some of these, um, like I said, I was able to get them as promos. and So that's how I end up with these. Built to Spill. Here's one, for example, I got as a promo. Conventional Wisdom. Built to Spill. Um, I haven't gone to see them. They've been to Omaha several times, and I just haven't bothered to go. I mean, you know, I, I, they are good. It's not quite what I'm into, but still, I, I, I do realize that if I would just go see them, that probably would, would do the trick. I pulled, um, oh, while I was at it, while I'm at it, here's a couple CDs that um, I pulled to play. Um, because they, people have been talking about them. I remember this one because it's so good in my mind, but i got to play it again. Ask the Ages, Sonny Chirac. Yeah, this is some, this is some dope. And boy, wouldn't this be nice on uh, vinyl. Yeah. Absolutely. There he is. Sonny Man. And then um, I also have this on CD. Uh, Faith Moves by Nikki Scopolitis and Sonny Chirac. But Scopolitis is a guitarist as well who I... I like, and I think it's a bit underrated. On the CMP label, I like this label quite a bit. So, um, both of these stay out until I get a chance to spin them. But some other singles that I pulled, um, thinking about uh, what Chris was showing was, here's a Pretty Things um, single um, put out by that label, Norton, where they do a, you know, a mock-up of the Fontana label. But it, yeah, it was, uh, I don't think Norton's around anymore. But yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, very nice, very nicely done. Very nicely done. So I have that, and then here is um, her Ubu, Data, Data Panic in the Year Zero. 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, fi oh, Final Solution, and My Dark Ages, that's what this is on Rough Trade. I used to have a um, final solution. I don't think I'd do any more. Now here's a kind of post-punk Brit Brit British band that I don't know um, if anyone's shown. Um, Stephen 73, you probably know this band. Craig Beck, and these are originals. This is so killer. If you like Penetration, Early Susie and the Banshees, these guys were just excellent. And then I have their second single. They had an album. I, I, I have it on this on I have it digitally, but I sadly I sold it. But no, yeah, these are original uh, singles. I've kept kept them since they came out. Just really, really cool shit. On spec records. So yeah, I have my P section out. Um, Lee Scratch Perry. This was put up by Mojo Magazine. It's beside City Too Hot. Lee Perry. Lee Scratch Perry. And it just again, it's one of those things where you know you had it, you sold it, but I've just got a couple of Pink Floyd singles. I have High Hopes. And this is uh, clear vinyl. limited edition comes with a poster. You know, this Accidente is moving along just fine. It's instrumental, which I, I really like. Here is When the Tigers Broke Free. This is um, 
Yeah, another nice package. Well, you know, that's the way the pink, pink Floyd like to do stuff. And uh, let's see, let's take a look at the record. Yeah. Just thought I would go ahead and uh, vibe on the record some more. Here's a picture disc by the band Pooh Sticks. I don't know if you call this power pop or what. You know, to me, again, I just hear this line. I mean, you, of course, the media has always had to come up with new genres to help sell records to new generations, but I just hear things kind of in a continuum. And I just like the British, um, in general, approach to pop music a lot. And just hear this continuum going even back before the Beatles, you know. Cliff Richard in the Shadows, or Cliff, yeah, Hank Marvin, Love Missile, F-111, Pop Elite Itself, Grebo Rock, yeah, good shit, good stuff, yeah, a bunch, records, 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 I just thought I'd just show some, some more, Andrew Poppy, The Amusement, reminds me somewhat of Philip Glass, this guy is excellent, got, Got several things by hand. I've only got a couple, but I've had a couple of porcupine tree uh, singles, piano lessons. Sure don't see porcupine tree singles. Yeah. Should I have this one? Can't remember where I found this. Oh, they are hard to find. See, I'm gonna put this one away before I move on because in moving on I show she's moved on by porcupine tree. I, I really like that cover. I think it's very. When I first saw it, it was so simple. I was fooled by it. I thought I was seeing a couple different things. You know. You know, I, for some reason I saw the woman with a sh in a shawl, but sh there is no shawl. Here's a single by Archer Pruitt. He's with the C and Cake. Band called Prick, similar to Owen the Bane, somewhere in the area of like. Mm, Ministry, Skinny Puppy, that kind of stuff. Primal Scream. What is this one? Imperial backed with uh, Starfruit Surfrider, yeah. There's Bobby Gillespie and, boy and the boys. Primal Scream, Creation Records, right? Absolutely. Creation Records. Primal. I'm showing my prints. Let me see what else I got here. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> ever heard of this, Ben? Princess Tiny Meat. Somehow there is a relationship to the Virgin Prunes, I'm thinking, possibly. Uh, one of the members was in the Virgin Prunes, but it's a single by them. I quite dug it actually. I didn't really quite get what they were about, but I dug it anyway. And um, used to cover this song, Digital Sex played this song by Psychedelic Furs, Mr. Jones. And I like the B side a lot too, Susan Strange. I just managed to hang on to this. Strange is the records I, I've kept and, and the ones that I've. I've sold a lot of super collectible stuff and kept these kind of oddballs. I don't know why. Punishment of Luxury. Ah, strange band, you know. They kind of reminded me a little bit of a punk genesis in a way. In a way. Just very... That... The way they presented themselves with the, the odd... Um, the, the songs weren't that that cool, but sorta, you know. 
Coast Punk. They also a Stranglers a little bit. They don't sound like the Stranglers, but I don't know. Just somehow those were bands that would all come in the same breath. And um, last thing I'll show here is um, today while I was out doing errands and uh, coming from the studio, um, I remember that I, uh, I was told about this uh, new secondhand shop that had a record shop. You know, actually, I thought they would just have some record crates, but so I stopped by there. Um, Blast from the Past, I think, is the name of the, the place. Turns out in the basement they have a record store. Um, a local photographer found a copy of Digital Sex there for 25 bucks. Turns out this guy is a collector, kind of knows his stuff. Not a whole, you know what I mean? He kind of knows, yeah, he knows. I was, I was impressed, actually. Showed me an original bubble bubble puppy. I already have one, but he also had um, more things like some original uh, rare Metallica, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, and then some old stuff like uh, excuse me, Eddie Cochran, and some really old jazz elephants. Joan, I was impressed. You know, not real impressed. I mean, I didn't find what I was looking for. I bought one item. I did. I did find something good, but. The, you know, it was just nice to find another place selling records, and he said he's doing pretty good, actually, so that was good. But while I was there, I got this Mingus, and this is a reissue, a little bit of a coffee stain there. This is a reissue, but it's it's a nice one. It's, um, I'll show you. Um, it's 180 gram, limited, limited edition, um, Real nice, heavy, heavy, 180 gram. And it says it right there on the label, limited edition. And um, the, the price in the store was, was 10 bucks, and he was having a 25% off, I believe is what he said it was, so I got it for 750 So that was a nice deal. So um, I picked this up today, some more uh, good jazz for the... And is there anything else sitting out here I have not shown? Because that does happen. Oh, I did find this out that this um, person, Steve Noble, I was talking about this. Um, I just bought this improvisational jazz album. Steve Noble was in the band Rip, Rig, and Panic. If you remember that band, there was a connection to... Was Ja Wobble in that band, or someone else possibly from Public Image Limited was in that band? Plus, Nana Cherry, Don Cherry's daughter, was in the band as, as well. Found that out about that. So, I think everything else here. Oh, I pulled this. I hadn't played this forever. Sounds pretty dated, but I'm glad I kept it. It's a band called. I saw these guys open for Peter Gabriel on his tour for the uh, security album, Electric Guitars. And uh, they have kind of a tribal, almost kind of similar to Thompson Twins, really, actually. Uh, but more kind of uh, neo-African with drums and stuff, even as you can see here. like, And then also the, uh, the uh, this is symbolized as, you know, I don't know, trash can art or something. But I pulled that. Because I'm playing that. Anything else here I haven't? Here. I'm just playing more of this stuff, listening to some of these records that I bought. Um, sorry. <laughs> I get vibed up watching other people's videos, you know, and it's like, um, I just want to talk about music some more, you know. Um, and I think that I've shown everything. Oh, this is something I have not shown that I pulled. I knew there was some stuff buried in here. Um, I've had this album a long time, and uh, just... It's some, it'll just hit me to play something. And um, the haters. In the Shade of Fire. This is actually the work of one person. His name is uh, G.K. Jupiter Larson. Um, apparently quite a character. The whole back is a treatise on what this is about. It's part bullshit, but mostly makes a lot of sense, actually. And the work on here is good. What it is is... It's, it is tapes of things being destroyed, collaged, and manipulated. Like, 
you can make out some things, you know, like chairs being broken up, glass, things like that, you know, nothing, but really, actually, really well done. And um, this is on Silent Records, came out in 1988. Just somehow this ended up being pulled, and this is actually really quite excellent, in my opinion, now that I get to talking about it and remembering how I reacted to it. This is real good. The Haters in the Shade of Fire. And one more thing. This is an album that I bought recently at the record fair. I used to own this. And like there's a couple good tracks, and then there's several tracks on here that I don't care for, but probably anyone else would like the whole thing. Yutaka. This is on the Alpha label. It's a Japanese um smooth jazz artist with a hint of the uh oriental flavor in there, which I like quite a bit. Uh the first track, Breath of Night is the uh, is outstanding in my opinion it's not the rest of the album is kind of just light in comparison the first album the first song is light but it's like it gets it right it's like it's got this vision that was not able to be uh, maintained throughout the album in the way that I would have liked it to have been that's how I'll put it because again I'm really thinking now about how hard it is to take um criticism. I mean, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. You got to take it in, you know what I'm saying? And it's good for you because people take music in different ways. And in presenting music, you know, it can only make us better and stronger at the very least, you know, to just be able to deal with, you know, okay, you know, tighten your shit up, you know, make your vision best you can when you, you know, the best you can the way you know how to. Anyway, I was just vibing on music. I get always get to this, you know, I used to really, no, I won't say that I used to be good at this, but it's more like what's going on is I just could talk on and on, you know, I could go on. It's not that I'm forgetting anything. It's more like, well, what next? Because there's a bunch of records that I wanted to pull and didn't pull and always could pull more. So uh, I'll stop here and Talk to you, you know, talk to me.